Hey guys, FlyGirlVSG coming into you again um, with my part one of two, um, two point and two point five, same difference, two and a half year post up um, vertical sleeve gastrectomy Q and A. I got so many good questions, and I haven't done a whole lot of thinking about the questions, so I'm going to be kind of winging it. So we'll see what happens and what comes out of my mouth. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everybody who submitted questions because they're really good, um, and they're actually really hard. So we'll see how much I um go um and look off into the distance. <laughs> so anyway, um, Angela uh, Rutiglian, oh, I'm sorry if that's said wrong, uh, Locke, um, says, how, do I, how did I determine my maintenance range? And um, I'm not in maintenance, so I don't know. Um, I, have, I am maintaining, <laughs> but when I say I'm maintaining, I'm basically losing and gaining the same 10 pounds um, over the last... Um, year, um, year, almost year. So, but that is not my maintenance range. Um, I have not hit goal. My goal, um, and I'll answer this in another question that Kareen asks later, but, um, I have not hit goal. And so I have not hit maintenance. I'm just maintaining because I've not, um, been doing everything I can. And even when I do, I've had some other factors working against me health wise. So, um, you know, I think at this point right now, it's kind of figuring out the health stuff and I'm um, being consistent. I think if I'm more consistent, because I, I tend to do like six or, you know, two or three months really hard and I start to see that scale drop and then I kind of spend a month off plan and then I do two or three months really hard and then I spend another. And so it's like I lose the 10 pounds really, really slow. And then those four weeks, I gain it back. I lose the 10 pounds really, really slow. I gain it back. So on and so forth. So that's the plan. So I don't really have a maintenance range. Um... Well, I do, I think. Um, I think I'll know it when I get there. But my, I, I mean, um, so I'm going to jump into Kareen Bridgewater's question, which is, um, what is your ultimate realistic goal? Um, my my goal right now is just to get back to where I was a year ago, which was, um, or just under, just over a year ago, which was about 181. Um, 180. I would like to be, I would like, let me rephrase. Oh, my God. I would be, I'd like to be in the 170s. Um I would like to surpass the 180s, but that's my goal is just to get back down to there and then and then go from there. My ultimate goal is 160. Um, I think that my frame can handle that. I think that um, I'm not a big boned person, I'm pretty moderate um, boned, and I think um, that would put me in a prime position for plastic surgery. Um, so my goal right now is to just get to like 179, um, which is about 30 two pounds from where I'm at right this minute, uh, probably closer to 28 pounds from where I'm actually at once I kind of detox from the last couple of weeks. Um, but anyway, that's still a ways. Um, and then ultimately, I'd like to lose another, um, you know, 18 or so pounds from there. My, my ultimate realistic goal is between 160 and 165, I would say. Um, if I get down to 170 or 175 and I'm like, hey, I feel great, then that's fine. I don't, I haven't weighed those um, numbers since high school, so I don't really know. Um, I know that um, a lot of people who get, you know, a lot of people get to their goal within a year and a year and a half, and I've, I've not. So, um, you know, I don't really know. I'm still in the um, to be determined category. But those are my two immediate, those are my two goals. Right now is just to kind of get back into Wonderland is my first goal. 11.5 pounds will get me to Wonderland or 100 land or whatever. And then um, 180 and or 179.9 is my other goal. And then one, you know, to kind of get into the 160s. But again, kind of like looking at realistic um, things along the way. And so those are how I've broken up into my smaller goals. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, Lisa VSG English is how does one become so fabulous? And um, Lisa, you should know the answer to that because you are also fabulous. So you tell me. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> um, Tara Thompson, what is your guilty pleasure? <sighs> Wine. <laughs> I think that's obvious. No, I'm just, I'm not to be insulting. Um, I, I really like wine. I mean, I, yeah. Also, what do you feel guilty um, eating but is logically okay to eat? And honestly, I think it's bread like and I don't mean like bagels and like big sandwiches but like I don't believe that bread should be off limits unless it's a trigger you know unless it's a trigger food but like sometimes I still feel guilty having you know a half a sandwich or 
you know, wrapping eggs and cheese in a tortilla or whatever. I, you know, I'm not doing a lot of processed carbs. So, um, sometimes I feel guilty about that, but I mean, I don't, you know, it's, it's really not that unless it's a trigger food for you. I don't think it's a issue. Um, so yeah, I kind of feel bad about that because, you know, we're so programmed and this goes into another question that I may get to later. We're so programmed about being low carb, low carb, low carb. And fundamentally, I actually, and low fat. And fundamentally, I actually don't believe in either one. I don't think either one is necessarily health, healthful. Um, and, and every body is different. That is my thought. But, um, overall carbs aren't the devil. It's the kinds of carbs that are the devil. Um, there's a difference between having a piece of whole grain, um, wheat bread with, you know, turkey and cheese and, and mustard or whatever and vegetables, um, versus, um, um, you know, a donut. There, there's a difference um, from a nutritional standpoint. So, um, Tully Engelhart says, when do you first, she asked a couple questions. When do you first see yourself visiting North Dakota? I don't know. <laughs> what is there to do in North Dakota? <laughs> Other than obviously see you, which would be very fun. Um, she says, will you still consider plastics even if the scale isn't where you want it to be? Um, as she is trying to decide this for herself right now. And I would say, yes, I would not consider plastics at my weight currently. I would not consider plastics at 200 pounds probably. But if I never got to 160, if I got down, let's say right now is June. If I got down to 180 by February of next year, okay, and I'm able to stay at that weight and cannot seem to lose more weight at 160 or 180, 170, something, you know, one higher 170s, low 180s, um, by like October, like I, I'm maintaining that weight for six months or five months or something. Um, yeah, I would definitely consider doing an arm lift at that point. Um, I probably would need to give it more time to decide if I wanted to do breasts and stomach. Those are kind of all on my list of things to do. Um, I'm not sure I would commit to that unless I know I've really tried to get down a little lower. But if I thought that 180 or 175 was my absolute maintenance range, um, and I had, I would definitely get an arm list. Uh, I've had some quotes and they say, you know, 20, 30, 40, even 40 pounds isn't going to make a difference on an arm lift. They make it pretty tight. So, um, you know, Dr. Katzen told me I could get my arm lift done now. I don't feel comfortable with that, but he's like, you could do it and you could lose 40 pounds and you'd be fine. I was like, okay, but I have 50 pounds to lose. And so that's not an option for me right now. But I think if I got down to 180, I definitely would do an arm lift. If I, if, if I was not losing weight past that for a while, like it wouldn't be like I got 180 and I went and had my arm lift. Like I'd give it some time, you know, but if I had my arm lift and I was still at 175, 180, whatever, and I, I'm do, following my plan and I'm working out and doing all the things and I still don't get to 160 a year from now, yeah, then I would. I would. I really would. Um, so that's where I'm at. Nikki Newman asks me if I'm still dealing with my adrenal issues. And I think the answer is definitely yes. But my um, naturopath that I've been working with has been on tour. She is in a band. She's super rad. Um, has been on tour. And so I haven't been able to see her. In fact, I need to probably make an appointment with her soon to get all of that checked out. Uh, my adrenals were getting better. Um, but I have not been treating them. Meaning that um, I have dropped some things that I'm supposed to be doing. And um, I'm supposed to be staying away from alcohol. And I'm supposed to be staying away from, um, like, shitty dairy products like Tillamook cheese, which I know people love Tillamook cheese, but it's not qual it's really not quality. It's not aged cheese. It's not the same. So, um, excuse me, but I haven't really been doing that. So like I have not been doing my part the last month. Uh, so yes, I, I, I think that the adrenals are still an issue, but I need to see her again, make sure everything's good and start, you know, doing the things I'm supposed to be doing, um, in terms of helping reduce inflammation and things like that. So, um, VSG, VS Jiki holiday. How do you say that? Um, she says, she asks, do you still eat like a uh, WLS person, i.e. high protein, low carb? Um, and I would answer the first part of that and say, I think I still eat like a weight loss surgery person when I'm on track. Um, but I will preface that by saying, I don't believe that eating like a weight loss surgery person person means high protein, low carb, high protein, not necessarily low carb. I do not believe that a low carb diet is, is for everybody. Um, my surgeon does not recommend a low carb diet. It's all about balance. 
Um, if you exercise pretty much at all, especially if you're weightlifting, you should not be eating low carb. You need you need carbs to fuel your body. You have to have quality unprocessed carbs, though. So whole wheat bread, um, quinoa, brown rice, uh, steel cut oats, um, fruit. You know these kinds of carbs are fine. Donuts, probably pasta. You know, po like po pasta. I'm like a freaking shotgun over here. Or a pasta. Um, uh, what else? You know, hamburgers, you know, buns and, you know, just like, I mean, I guess, I guess bread is processed carbs, but, um, you know, those kinds of things aren't, um, aren't what I mean. So it does make a difference, you know, cinnamon rolls and sugar and candy and those kinds of carbs, like those, those shouldn't. Those shouldn't. Um, and they do. They happen in my diet occasionally, too. But for the most part, I do have um, more high-quality carbs, less processed carbs, things like that. Um, my carb goal is 88 grams a day. That is not low-carb. That is not high-carb, either. That is a moderate, balanced amount of carbs. Um, my protein goal is 119. That's super high. <laughs> um, you know, my nutritionist says my goal, my protein goal is 60 grams of carbs a day. So I have to drink three shakes a day right now to get my protein in. It's really fucking intense, let me tell you. But, you know, also this is what I'm experimenting with in terms of trying to find the things that my body likes. I generally eat higher fat because I, I kind of believe a, in a paleo mentality. Um, but I think I'm fat sensitive. I, I don't think I'm – if I'm eating the right kinds of carbs, I'm not carb sensitive. So, um, yeah, my body will respond to things like alcohol and candy and sugar and ice cream and things like that. But it will not respond negatively to – whole grain bread, rice, quinoa, um, things that don't necessarily cause inflammation if they have the right ingredients in them um, and, and are whole whole foods. So, yeah, I think I do eat like a weight loss surgery person until I don't. And 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 let me say, um, you know, my portions are still smaller than obviously they were three years ago. Um, they are bigger than they used to be. And I'll talk about that in another question here. Um, and sometimes I have no restriction and sometimes I have a ton. So it really depends on, on me. I really have had to learn to respect my, um, respect that, respect that signal. So, and sometimes I do a better job at it than others. Mostly I do, but so yeah, I, I really try to eat whole foods, um, healthy. Um, but I don't focus on low carb. I think some people are carb sensitive if I'm fat sensitive, some people are carb sensitive, sensitive or protein sensitive. Um, but I think that um, in general, it's about balance. And, and that includes carbs, especially if you're exercising. Um, Carmen Patton asks, how is your life different than pre-surgery? And is there anything about pre-surgery life that you miss? Um, there's a lot of things about my life that are different. And a, and this is a really good question. And one that I, I, I wish I'd given more thought to other than just coming on here and saying it, but my life is different pre-surgery in the fact that like good and bad things, mostly good. I can shop in regular stores. Even now at 211 pounds at the size 14, I can go into old Navy or Kohl's or, you know, forever 21 and find something that fits and walk out. That blows my mind. Like even now blows my mind. Um, I have, you know, I've always felt like I was a confident person, um, and I still feel that way, and there are some things that I'm more insecure about now than I was before. Like, I was always wearing kind of baggy clothes before, and now I like to wear clothes that are fitted, so even though I'm, st I'm still, but I'm still pulling because my skin is looser, and a lot of my weight right now is in my belly, and so, like, I get insecure about things being too tight on that. Um... um just knowing that I could do really anything. I could go zip lining. I can not sink a ship if I decide to go rafting. I probably wouldn't break a horse's back. Um, I can um, sit in the airplane and not, you know, I, I don't have to ask for the seatbelt extender and I can not pour over into the other person's seat. Um, just all of those things, the attention also, like people are a little bit nicer to me and I didn't really notice that because I'm a super nice person and people respond to that more than I, you know, that I feel that that's what they've responded to most of my life. But in general, like men look at me more and, um, yeah, that kind of stuff is weird, um, but definitely different. Um, some of my friendships have changed in, in ways that I, 
you know, like we'd get together and we'd eat, you know, like that was the thing that we did. And some of those friendships have grown and changed and adjusted and become better. And some of them not necessarily worse, but different. Um, so yeah, I mean, but there's, I, I have to say there's nothing about my life pre-op that I, I miss. My life is so good. I mean, like there's room for improvement, like a lot of room for improvement, but I wouldn't go back. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back. Um, okay. So Jill Werfelman says, I know you were getting married. If you were planning to have kids, are you worried about babies post weight loss surgery, i.e. weight gain, skin cravings? Um, we are not planning on having kids. Uh, we are about 90% sure we are not going to have kids. We're shelving the issue until after the wedding because we are both pretty sure we don't. Um, but it is still a topic of discussion pretty regularly. So, um, if we were to decide to have kids, definitely, I would be worried about all of those things. Um, but I mean, what do you do? I mean, I guess just not have a be like, oh, I'm pregnant. And this is the same for skinny people. This is why skinny people who or or average size people sometimes gain 60 to 100 pounds and then have a really hard time getting the weight off is because they eat carte blanche, right? Like you still have to eat a healthy diet. You still have to, you know, um, I guess, take care of yourself and not just be like, oh, great, donuts and cookies, you know. Um, so I don't know. Again, going back to balance, right? Um, so yeah, I know that that's not a great answer for you. Um, because I know that that's something you're going through. But yeah, in terms of the skin stuff, I guess I would just not have plastics until that was done. Um, and so on. But yeah, I would be concerned about weight gain for sure. But I mean, what do you do? I mean, there's a person growing inside your body. That's pretty big deal. Pretty awesome. Let's see here. Um, I have two more questions before I'm going on to the next video. I'm just trying to, um, I think I answered all of them except for Trisha's. Um, Trisha asked a lot of questions, so I'm just going to, um, do each one individually. Now, Trisha is somebody that I am personally friends with before either of us had weight loss surgery. So she's, um, a friend in my life and also now post-op as well. Um, I, and she also had the sleeve, uh, I think it was just about, um, a little over a year ago, I believe. So, um, she asks, did your trip to Nashville, she's very insightful and very smart, so. These are all amazing questions, and it'll probably take me 20 minutes just to answer these. <laughs> but she says, D did your trip to Nashville help you get perspective on your struggles over the past year? And I would say um, yes, y yes, yes. Um, the, the short answer is yes, in the sense that I'm uh, um, not the only one dealing with regain. And so um, I realized that all the stress going into Nashville and, like, all the beating – I didn't beat myself up too bad, but, like, I was definitely worried – um, and scared and nervous that people would look at me and be like, oh, yeah, Lindsay, I had actually numerous people approach me and say, I think you look great. And I can't see the difference. I totally can see the difference, especially in the photos from last year to this year. Um, but it, 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 it was sweet, I, whether they're lying to me or not. It was nice to know that most people didn't see it the way I do. Um, and, and not, you know, obviously regain is a struggle and a terrible thing for every, not, I mean, that sounds really judgmental. That's not what I mean. Um, it, it's a sucky thing for everybody. Um, but I wasn't the only one. So not saying like, oh, I can name five people who had regained, but like everyone, some people who had regained express that, that, okay, I've had regained too. And so like, A, it made me feel like I wasn't the only one. I wasn't the only one thinking about it. Maybe it wasn't as bad. Maybe it doesn't seem as, or looks as bad as I think it does. I don't know. Um, that I'm totally not alone that other people are going through this. And it totally motivated me to like, you know, we kind of inspired and motivated each other to be like, okay, now what, you know, let's, let's do it. And so lots of us are back on track and like fucking getting it done. You know what I'm saying? So it just took me a couple weeks to, <laughs> to come back to reality and figure that out. Um, so yes, I, the short answer is, is yes. And um, she also asks, did you find similarities or comfort in others who have may, may have faced the same obstacles, stalls, etc.? And And so, yeah, I think I addressed that already. Um, uh, comfort. Um, I'm not sure that's the word. I guess just um, a sense of definitely solidarity. Um, you know, we're all in this together and all of us have different struggles and the same struggle. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, we all are different. We all, our bodies are different. They respond to different things and our heads are different. But at this end of the day, like, you know, 
each of us have like X, Y, and Z equals, you know, A, B, C or whatever. So, um, yeah, definitely. Um, I know you, there were plans to pursue plastics before the wedding. Has that been rescheduled? That was actually put on the shelf a long time ago. Um, and Trisha, I'm sorry, I haven't talked to you about it. I guess I haven't seen you in a while. Um, but yeah, that has been shelved for a long time for financial purposes. Um, so also because I've had regain, I don't feel comfortable doing that until I have lost more weight. Um, to maximize results. I don't want to have to do it again. I don't want to do it now and then in, in 40 pounds be like, well, I still have saggy skin. I'd rather get to the best place I can be. Um, now, in two years, if I'm still here, then I'll probably do it. But um, I hope that, you know, I'm not giving up. I'm not, I'm going to keep pushing. So, um, yes, on the shelf. Are you happy with the modifications on your dress to accommodate what you're uncomfortable with? And what she's referring to is that I'm uncomfortable with my arms everyone knows that. Um, so yeah, the modifications, I mean, here's the truth is, so here's what happened is that I bought, I didn't, I was refusing to fall in love with a sleeveless dress. All the dresses I tried on had sleeves or I was going to buy a bolero or something. Well, bolero's is a, is a great theory, but all of them looked terrible. Um, and I fell in love with a sleeveless dress. So what I did was I removed the train off the dress and I made sleeves out of the fabric. So that way the sleeves were made with the same fabric of the dress. The difference being the dress is lined and the sleeves are not. So the sleeves are more see-through. So they have a slightly different like color hue, but they don't only because you can see my skin underneath versus the white lining, right? Um, so it's the same material and I have a really nice decolletage and um, shoulders. And so the, the, the dress is still sleeveless, but the, the sleeves come up to right, like right here. Um, and, and they come down to about here. So they hide, you know, almost everything. There's still a little bit of this that you can see, which is unfortunate. Um, no, there's baby. Oh, something fun to do. Okay. That's can't, sorry. Um, that's his ringtone, but I will answer him in a minute. Um, so yeah, it covers all of this. So, and it's, and it's, it's, you can't see anything. It's perfect. So yeah, I'm super happy with that. Um, again, it looks better sleeveless, but I don't feel better sleeveless. So it's, it's perfect. Um, and then the last question that Trisha asked, and then I'll, I'll switch to the next video is, um, do you feel that being such a big part of the weight loss surgery community has helped or hindered you? And I would say without question helped me. Um, there are some things that I feel can be a negative side effect of being in the weight loss surgery community in the sense that like most of my friends, they drink a lot. And so like, and I wouldn't say hindering because um, I have my own choice, right? But like we all get together and we all party pretty hard. And sometimes that can get me a veered off track and, and, but that's on me, that's not on them, you know? And so that, that's the only small downside of that. For the most part, though, like I have people kicking my ass. I have people supporting me. I have made lifetime friends like some of my closest friends now are from this community. And, I, you know, more so than that, I feel like I've I've um, I have family in a way that I d didn't have before. Um, I know that if I don't make a video every week, I've got six people being like, where's your video? What's wrong? Are you OK? What do you need? Um you know, and part of that's like, oh, I have crazy stalker friends. <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> but more importantly, I have people who are holding me accountable. So even when I fail, I have people holding me up. And even when um, I'm rocking it and succeeding, I have people being like, keep going, keep pushing, do more, you got this. Um, so I think if I were, you know, I don't know, because I've, I because I've been making videos since like a month before surgery. I don't really know what my journey would be like without it. I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't imagine it though. Um, I think I'd be lonelier. I really do. I, um, even though some of my good friends, personal friends, three, three, at least three, four, five people now, um, have had surgery since I've had surgery. Um, six that I know and one had before I did, but, um, you know, there, um, I think every one of those people are not in the community. And so, and, and I don't really talk to them about it. Um, I think Trisha, you're the really, and Tessa are the really the only two people who I talk to regularly about surgery and about, um, the journey of it. And, um, and Tessa probably most of all, but 
Yeah. So I think I'd be lonelier. I think I'd feel more isolated. I think I'd, you know, I mean, I, um, I just, I can't, ex I, I really am truly speechless when it comes to the amount of support and, um, I, I get, um, from being involved in this community and being at WLSFA where everybody, you know, it's just, it's a big deal. Trisha, by the way, WLSFA is in Portland next year. You, sh you need to, you need to be there. Like seriously need to come because there's no excuse. It's here in town. So mark your calendar. May, I think it's May 19th through 21st or May 20th or something like that. So next year. Um, that's all the questions I'm going to answer right now. I'm going to call my fiance back. I'm going to upload this video. I will, I have another, um, like nine or 10 questions to ask, answer, whatever. Um, maybe I need another coffee, cup of coffee beforehand. And I will, um, yeah, thank you guys for the questions. I, I hope I answered them, uh, well. Um, and yeah, like I said, I'm going to put another video on in a minute. So, um, yeah. And, and I, the, I think all the questions you guys asked are really thoughtful and, um, thought provoking and, uh, good. So I hope, yeah, I hope I did them justice. All right, you guys keep it fly out there. I'll be right back.